What's up, y'all? My name is Philip Jordan. I am the host of the SEC Brawl podcast. For more SEC content, go to the description below and you subscribe to the podcast to get the full episode. Joining me right now is Brandon Eiserman. You can check him out over our last word on college football where he covers the LSU Tigers and you can listen to his podcast, the LSU Breakdown Podcast. I think out of all the teams in the SEC, everybody was impacted by lack of spring, but LSU, it really hurt because – you know, I know they had a few spring practices, but not having the full spring to kind of – all these new players you're going to have. And maybe the defense under Bo Pelini would have been a hair better. I don't know, but the game kind of passed him by. I think we'll both agree on that one with Bo Pelini. But just how, how big, you know, is it this year for LSU to just get this full spring, to have those 15 practices to get ready for the 2021 season, especially after the tough year they had, despite – yeah, they went 5-5, five and five, they won those last two, but it was a tough year for LSU. So, you know, a long way of asking the question, how big will these 15 practices be uh, for LSU this spring? Yeah, I, I think it's really huge. Uh, you know, going back to last year, like you said, they got the couple of practices in. Um, and it really showed the first, you know, game or two or three that they only did get a couple of practices because of COVID. I mean, I know everybody else was hit with it. Uh, so no disrespect to the other, you know, all the other 129, 130 programs across the country. But, um, you know, for LSU, it kind of it, it did them in in a way that nobody thought it was going to. They were just coming off of a national championship. Everybody thought that, you know, they could probably do it again, even though they lost Joe Burrow and all those other talented players to the NFL. Uh, in the 2020 draft, but the way that it played out for them, you could really tell that the lack of being able to practice in the spring really took a toll on that program. You know, going into next season, going into the spring too as well, kind of staying with that theme, I mean, I I think it's a crazy, in a way it's a crazy question to ask, uh, but I also think, you know, with LSU, LSU is expected to compete for SEC titles and then hope to get to a national championship, and you've now reached out with Coach Orgeron, you know, in 2019, but after the season, LSU just went through, and, of course, there was some kind of off-the-field stuff. We won't get into all that here. But uh, going into this spring and going into next season, how much pressure do you think is on Coach Ogeron? Uh, I think there's a lot more than a lot of people think there is. Uh, now, I'm not going to put him, like, at the top of the hot seat or anything, but there is a lot of pressure on him to win, say, seven, eight, nine, potentially ten games. Um, because last year you went five and five. You squeaked out your last two wins, but you did give up a total of, I think it was 72 points uh, against Florida and Ole Miss in those final two games. And then you self-imposed on a bowl ban, uh, which really doesn't look good at all, especially coming off national championship the year before. But going into 21, uh, I think there's a lot of pressure on not only Coach O, but the the entire staff, the entire team as a whole, uh, to really get back to – you know, the the borderline of LSU football, which is eight and four, nine and three, ten and two. Uh, if they don't do that, then there could be a lot of speculation, a lot of rumors going around at the end of the season that nobody's going to want to hear about. So, you know, you look at this team, of course, you're bringing in new coordinators. I mean, you, new office coordinator, new defense coordinator seem like they're kind of jumping into the 2019 well a little bit. I think I told you that a couple of weeks ago when we talked, uh, you know, uh, with the coordinators are bringing in with Durante Jones coming in as defense coordinator. Then you've got, of course, Jake Peets coming in office coordinator. He worked under Joe Brady with the Carolina Panthers. Jones worked under Aranda uh, a few years ago at Wisconsin when he was the defense coordinator there. But uh, overall, when you look at this this roster, this team, for you, what, what's the biggest storyline or biggest questions going into spring that may need – obviously you don't expect to get answered in the springtime, but something that uh, LSU needs to really address? Uh, I really, Philip, I think it's the schematic sense from an offensive standpoint. Uh, last year they were really good when Brennan was playing until he got hurt. Uh, T.J. Finley obviously had his ups and downs, and then Max Johnson came in and played well. Um, but I think another thing for LSU into 2021 that we may not see through the spring is they're going to have to establish a running game again. 2020 was horribly bad for LSU in the running game. They had a lot of talent there. You had one guy in Chris Curry who transferred, um, and that was a guy that I thought was going to have a stellar career coming in. Um, he was being compared to uh, Marshawn Lynch, who used to play in the NFL for a long time. He was a really good running back. But he didn't get the playing time he deserved, so he left and went. I think he went to Utah. Um, but I just think, from a running back standpoint, LSU is going to have to find a way to run the ball better. And then defensively, you're just going to have to do better than what you did in 2020. Uh, I, I knew from the very get go that Bo Pelini was the wrong hire defensive coordinator, and man, it showed in the first game against Mississippi State, uh, and then throughout the season. Yeah. 
maybe with the exception of the Vanderbilt game, but the rest, the other, you know, eight, nine games, it, it showed. And I think this year LSU can really – I don't think they have to do much to be better defensively than they were last year um, just because of kind of how bad the defense was. But offensively, you got to run the ball more effectively this season to be able to get back, you know, into an SEC championship contention. And then defensively, you just got to pick up the broken pieces and – just start fresh and come out hot defensively. You know, and I remember last year, you know, around this time when LSU was coming off the national championship, we're just kind of looking at this team moving forward. And I mean, you because I was very impressed with uh, Chris Curry, how he played against Oklahoma in the semifinal game. Uh, he played really well because Clyde Edwards Hilaire did not play that game. You know, he had set out, and he, of course, he played in that championship game. He played really well. I said, you know, I like this a lot, what they have here, and it just didn't work out for him this past year or with with the offense there at LSU. You know, this past year, of course, he's just transferring out. Uh, when you look on the defense side of the ball, players uh, that I noticed, uh, Jabril Cox, uh, who, who are some players you can see on this defense that really could stand out, you know, like I said, in the spring, you know, replacing him? Like I know I have seen, you know, he has been looked at in the draft. You expect him to be drafted, be an NFL guy. And I still – and that was the thing with LSU's defense. I mean, it's one thing to – not be as good as you once were, but be that bad with the NFL talent that is on the field, which it could go back just like spring practice last year. But uh, defensively, uh, you know, who are some of the, I guess, the new playmakers, you know, fans could see for the LSU Tigers in your mind? Yeah, uh, Philip, I, I, I've got the recruiting, um, the recruiting class pulled up right here. And I think Xavier Carter could be a guy uh, that could step up. He's going to be an incoming freshman. Uh, but look, man, LSU lost – I think just two player, two starters from last year. They're returning, I think, 20 of 22 starters. I think the two starters that they lost were Jabril Cox and I believe it was Jacoby Stevens. Uh, so those are two defensive guys. I don't think they lost anybody on the offense, which is a really good thing coming into this season. Uh, but defensively, I think Xavier Carter could be one of those guys at linebacker. Uh, Damon Clark could be another one of those guys. I've been really high on him the last couple of seasons. And with Cox gone, I think that he can kind of fill that void. Um because Cox had a really good season last year um, in his graduate, his long graduate season in Baton Rouge. But somebody's got to step up, and I think it'll either be Carter or uh, uh, Demol Clark. You know, on the offense side of the ball, and uh, you know, kind of looking at research because you know, you kind of got to refresh your memory a little bit. Who's coming back? Who's not? You know, when you're when you used to get away, kind of a few weeks separate from the season. If it's not a team, you cover regular base course. You cover LSU. You, LSU, you know this, but just looking at the conference, you kind of have to remember. And LSU will have all their offense linemen coming back, uh, and then of course, you know, Butte there at wide receiver, uh, Kayshawn Butte. I was very impressed with him toward the end of the year. He really came on. I think it was the Alabama game. He really started to show some things, and he just continued week in, week out. He built on that momentum there. And uh, we know LSU is going to have receivers. But, you know, the, the, the question with LSU is obviously who's going to be the quarterback? Who, who's going to play quarterback day one against UCLA? Oh, man, right now, um, my, my guess would be Miles Brennan. But I would not overshadow T.J. Finley or Max Johnson. And I definitely would not overshadow incoming freshman Garrett Nussmeyer. That guy, I think he's going to be an absolute stud. Uh, and, Philip, if I had to give you one of those three other quarterbacks besides Brendan that could give Brendan a run for his money going into the fall, I would, I'm going to say Nussmeyer. Uh, now, look, I, lo- I like T.J. Finley. I love what Max Johnson did the final two games. They both have, I think, stellar careers ahead of them uh, in Baton Rouge. But Nussmeyer is on a different level, and everybody has been hyping this guy up ever since he's committed. Um, but I don't think you shy away from starting Brennan, even though he got hurt, you know, three games into the season. Had he stayed in, I think LSU would have been better uh, last season o- offensively. And carry that over into 2021. Just let him take the reins against UCLA. Uh, and let him, you know, come back and show what he can do after that injury that sidelined him for the you know the remainder of the 2020 season yeah you know as long ago i put out an article about last word talking about the top five returning quarterbacks and i put miles brennan at number five and he probably would have been higher had he played more than three games because 11 touchdowns three interceptions uh, he played really well he didn't throw uh i think under 350 I, I don't think he threw under 350 in any of those games uh so he uh he played really really well in those games i think he was not the reason why they struggled the early part of the season uh, when he was in there. So that's going to be intriguing. 
Thank you for listening to this clip of SEC Brawl. If you like what you heard here and you want more great SEC content, go in the description below, click the link, subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify.